Hey there, car fans. I'm Martin from Mud City. I started into cars when I was a very young lad. Um, I was about eight or nine when I got into cars. Um, I remember when I first had my very, very first Evolution, which was an Evolution 3, 1996 RS model at that. And I had an experience with one of my neighbors who was a legendary um, racer, David Somerville Senior, who was big into racing, big into Evos. And one day I was walking on the road um, and he saw me and he was driving in his Evolution 5. He stopped and picked me up. He knew who I was based on my family. We lived um, about a few houses apart from each other. So he carried me in his car and we, you know, flashed up the road and then he dropped me off. And I remember watching that car going back down the road and I said to myself, I will have to own one. One day I will have to own an Evolution. So my first Evolution was an Evo 3 and then I had an Evolution 9 MR. Then I had an Evo 5, which was a race car. And then currently, in the collection so far, I have a 2012 Evolution 10 GSR, uh, the manual five-speed. Um, I also have a 1994 Mazda RX-7 FD. I have a 1996 Toyota Supra, which is the NA engine, but it is the six-speed from factory. I have the GT engine, which will be swapped. And I also have a 1973 Porsche 911 Targa, which is currently at the shop because it's always leaking oil. And we are currently rebuilding, I'm rebuilding it with my dad, a 1968 Lotus Cortina. 1600 um, engine, naturally aspirated with the 40 Webers on there. Modifications done on the Mazda RX-7, it's very long, but the high level, it's no longer the twin turbo, it's a single turbo running a GTX 35R Gen 2, and also a four inch downpipe running into a three inch exhaust. It's a HKS high power exhaust and running about 11 pounds of boost right now. Stock primary uh, 550cc injectors and are running 1300cc injectors on the secondaries and also running a V-mount um, intercooler setup um, where we can manage the temperatures a lot better. I'd strongly recommend it if you have an RX-7. Uh, the brakes have been upgraded, running EBC um, red stuff on the front, EBC green stuff on the back for the um, brake pads, and also running some EBC slotted rotors as well. Steel braided lines all around on all four corners, running Fortune Auto 500 uh, coilovers, which are very good, uh, very high range of adjustability to get the car set running rose joints on all of the corners of the, the back end. The diff has a upgraded um, race beat brace, um, which I got through a friend of mine. And a lot of other simple modifications, such as the bonnet is carbon fiber and running a shine out of body kit on the front and also on the rear wing. The interior is pretty much stock. I have the stock seats in there. Haven't really touched anything. Love the interior of the, the RX-7s. So basically I'm just running aftermarket gauges and uh, aftermarket instrument cluster hood, which um, if you are going to change that, be careful when removing it because it will break. That's what happened to mine. A lot of parts break because the car is very old. It's a 1994, as you'd expect things will break on the car. At these car shows, car meets, classic car club um, link-ups, a lot of people approach me asking, you know, about advice for getting into the cars and rebuilding the cars. So the biggest thing I would say is have a budget and try to stick to it. You know, not everything on the shelf you need to buy, not everything that you see other people buying, you need to buy. So make the car unique to yourself um, and stick within your budget because I can tell you from experience in my younger days, it was 
like a train wreck trying to keep up with the, you know, buying all the parts and getting them into the country with customs duty and so on. So I would say take your time, you know, find a car that is within your budget, find a car that you love, that you will rebuild, that you will be dedicated to the project because it does take a lot of patience, a lot of tears, blood, sweat, hard work, and you have to be persistent to get to this type of um, restoration level. So that would be my biggest advice and just never lose your passion for it. Always find the fun in it. If you're losing the fun in it, maybe it's not something for you. Um, you have other ways to rebuild cars as well. You can give it to a shop to rebuild. But if you are a true D, um, DIYer like myself, then you try to do most of the work yourself, which in the long run saves you a lot on labor and materials and so on because you are doing it a lot yourself. So that's the type of advice, but I would say definitely if you love cars like I do, then go for it and just... If you love cars, then just go for it and have that passion. You see, because it's, it's, it's their go home time, you know, that's why. Basically. So, So if you love cars, I would say stick to the passion and get it done and you will definitely be able to reap the reward and people always ask me if it's worth it, it's 100% worth it.